Hello, Foolish for Christ here. I hope everyone is staying safe in this uh, pandemic. Uh, I pray everyone is continuing to wear their mask and um, the children wearing their mask. It's uh, an inflammatory disease that is affecting the children. So I just pray that everyone is being safe during this time. Um, today's lesson is the perfect law of liberty. And we're going to be taking our first scripture from James 1, 22 through 25. And I also have my other scriptures on my screen, my uh, computer screen, in case I look away. All right, James 1, 22 through 25. It says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Amen. So we're going to break down this scripture, um, the perfect law of liberty. We're going to break that down. Perfect means having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as it possible to be. Absolute. Complete. God's word is absolute. It is complete. He is complete. And it says in Matthew 5 and 48, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Perfect means having all the required or desirable elements or qualities. So God wants us to have the same qualities as Him. 1 Peter 1, 15-16 says, But as He which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes, holiness is required even still today. First John 4 and 7 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. He wants us to be as He is in this world. He is a holy God who wants a holy people. And without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. God's ways are perfect. And when we do it, at, when we do it like He says according to His word, then we will have liberty. Liberty is the state of being free. Liberty. When we see ourselves and we make the decision, I want to be saved, I want to live right and put away my sin, then when you do this, you have liberty. So it's just like when someone goes to, when someone gets locked up, um, and they're in prison. They're in bondage. They can't go nowhere. They can't do what they want to do. They can't do the things that they were doing. But they are locked up in prison. But when they are free, when they get out of jail or out of prison, they are free. They are no longer in bondage. But they're able to go and do what they want to do. They are free. They're no longer in jail. That's the same that's the same freedom that we have from sin. Um, when we decide to get saved, God saves us from our sin. Not that we can continue in sin, but he saves us from our sin. And we're going to look more into that. It said, now this was not, now this was not possible for the Old Testament church. It was not possible for the blood of animals to take away sin. So God sent his son 
to die for the sins of the world. Matthew 1 and 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Isn't that all right? John 8 and 36 says, If the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. When Jesus came and was asked to read the scripture in the synagogue, he read this, which was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, as they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. And so that's what Jesus came to do. He came to set liberty the captives because we were slave to sin we were slave to the devil and whatever satan says to do and we went and we did whatever our, our own flesh wanted to do we was held captive to that but jesus said i came to set the captives free that we don't have to be bound to our flesh we don't have to be bound to satan and sin but we can live free we can live righteous we can live holy Amen. And then he said to give them beauty for ashes. I thought about back when I was young, a, t a young girl, and I was in sin, and I was dating this guy, and we was having a rough patch because he was very possessive. And so um, I was dating this guy, and I was just I was going through, and I re I remember this uh, singer. She had died in a car crash. I mean, a crane, crane crash, plane, I'm sorry, plane crash. And people used to say I look like her. And so I was so hurt that she had died. And I was like, Lord, it should have been me because my life is so messed up. It should have been me. Her life was so beauty, beautiful. And so I look back on that and that's, that's what, that was that, those ashes. You know, I was in sin. I was fornicating. I was a liar. I was, I was deep in sin. And I was miserable. You know, those were those ashes. And he took me and he gave me beauty. You know, now I'm, I have a husband. And God has taught me how to love him. And I have four beautiful children uh, in a marriage. And like God had intended from the beginning how a family ought to be God has blessed me to and called me to preach and and have ministry over young girls and to teach Sunday school God has brought forth beauty out of my life and has helped me to put away the sin and has helped me to die to my flesh and so now I can choose what's right to do now I can live holy live the way he had desired for us to live from the beginning amen and so that's that beauty for ashes and whatever you have gone through whether it was uh molestation whether it's bad boyfriends or uh whatever you going through or whatever you have gone through jesus said he even said he uh in this same scripture he said he have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted so he can heal that broken hearted heart and he can give you a heart to forgive. He can give you a heart to love them who are unlovely, love them who are hateful and mean or who have wronged you. He can give you a heart to love them. That's what he came to do, to, to give liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them 
that are bound. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so the perfect law of liberty, it said when you look into it and continue therein, then you will be blessed in all your deeds. Let's look at Galatians 5 and 1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Meaning, once Christ has freed you from those things, don't go back to that that they don't get back entangled with the yoke of bondage. If he have freed you from that boyfriend, that, that fornicating relationship, don't go back talking to him or talking to her. But you wait on the Lord for a wife or wait on the Lord for a husband. If he have delivered you from cussing or delivered you from drinking, or whatever he have delivered you from. He said don't go back. Don't go back and pick it back up. But he said to continue therein. And you will be blessed in all your deeds. And you must read the word of God. The word John 17 and 17 says sanctify them through thy truth. The word is that is the truth. How are you going to know how to live right? It's in the word of God. He tells us how to live right. He, he teaches us about him and what is required of him. Because in Psalms 100 said, he has made us. You know, we are his sheep of his pasture. He have created us. We, he is the potter. We are the clay. And so we owe him our life because he sent his only son to die for our sins. We should have took that punishment. So we owe him our lives amen and so we have to read the word and more importantly he says um he says to uh when we get saved and we give our hearts to god not only do we need to read the word but we need to ask the lord to fill us with his holy spirit jesus when he left he sent the helper. The helper is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what keeps us, which guides us and leads us into all truth. Bring scripture back to our remembrance. Convict us of wrongdoing. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And so we need him on board. I remember when I was going to this mega church before I came to the church of God. And I was at this church and he did preach some things that would make you want to change because I knew I wanted to be celibate and I didn't want to be fornicating anymore and, 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 and lying and doing all these things that I shouldn't have been doing. And so I, I stopped doing that. But I was in a justified state. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then that's a sanctified state. So I was just, I wasn't filled yet because he didn't preach about the Holy Spirit ministry. And so I found myself at the... I was doing well for a while, going Sunday, Wednesday, Friday. I was doing well. I found myself back in that same place that I was. <laughs> and I remember it like it was yesterday. I was looking out the window. And I was in the car of my uh, the guy I was dating. And I was looking out the window. And I was like, how did I get here? I was doing so well. I was in church Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. I was listening to the Christian station. How did I get back here? And I thank God. God brought me into the truth. And he helped me to understand that I needed to go on to sanctification. I needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so when I came into the truth, not only, um, that's how I met my husband. And my husband was going to uh, Church of God. And so uh, he brought me to that church. And they preached about the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do, how it keeps us and helps us to live right. And so as I rededicated my life there and I asked the Lord to fill me with his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it made he convicted me. And so when I found myself in situations that I shouldn't have been in, I felt a strong conviction. And I was like, oh no, we shouldn't do this because that's what the Holy Spirit was doing. It was helping me to live right, helping me to make right choices. And so I thank the Lord for blessing me and uh, thank the Lord for blessing this lesson. 
and I'm going to uh, continue this lesson. It's not finished. And so I pray that you will come back next time to hear the rest. God bless you. Stay safe. I love you. And this is Foolish for Christ.